Is there anyone that every time you post an Instagram story, you are looking to see if they watched it? And once they watched it, you don't even look anymore. Maybe that's the person you need to take away from your Instagram story viewers. If you're feeling dumb, like it's because you're not going to the dentist. What? (laughs) With peace and love, I'm muting you. With peace and love. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your favorite podcast, Stop the Internet Podcast. My name is Kelly. I'm Rebecca. Guys, I'm starting off with a plea. (laughs) If you like this podcast, please, 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 no, I I can't get in your frame. Please share this podcast with your friends. Hit subscribe. If you are listening on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts, please rate it five stars. And if you are really feeling like the kindest person on planet Earth today, open YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube. You don't need an account. You just need a Gmail, which I know that you have. And if you really are like Mother Teresa up in here, comment on this video on YouTube. It will literally save (laughs) my life. (laughs) The comments on YouTube have been insane. It's really just the YouTube shorts, but I'm really trying to land this in the algorithms of the right people. So anything that you can do to help me out, please, please. Subscribe, like it, five stars, whatever, literally whatever, and I will be eternally grateful. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes. Now everything she said. Yeah. Now I hope to give you something, which is entertaining content. Yeah. Okay. If you ever wonder, like, why would I do that for them? If you've ever enjoyed this content, if you've hate watched this content, if you've gotten the slightest bit of entertainment in return, you can do this one thing for me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Anyway. A small favor to ask, really. Right. Yeah. Small. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. It doesn't feel like we're recording for some reason. Why? Like, I don't know. Is something going wrong? Yeah. <laughs> no. Not not technology, not technically okay. speaking. I just, I'm like, whoa, is this thing on? It's probably because we just talked about this for like three hours. Yeah. And now we're doing, now it, we're doing it on it. camera. I was going to kind of open the podcast by saying we did just rant for hours. Well, I feel like I did. Your ranting was justified. It's okay. And. Your ranting is too. Thank you. Rant, it's a safe space for ranting in my Thank house. You. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, yeah, we just ran it for three hours and now we're going to do it on camera. Period. Perfect. Do you have anything to say? (laughs) Please subscribe. (laughs) Well, something you didn't say, maybe you did, follow us on Instagram because we post reels and just like we're a great follow. Yes. Or TikTok. Anything. Otherwise, Stick Season is still not my favorite song. Slay. That's so valid. (laughs) I have a life update that I need to get out there before it's too late. I think that Triangle Swimwear is going to make a resurgence and it's going to be very popular. But the thing about the styles is they don't make those iconic styles anymore. Right. Now their swimwear is kind of like kind of the same. It's just like it's a every other, Yeah, like every swimwear brand. So those iconic neoprene like outlined bikinis, I think they're going to come back in with like the neon colors and everything. And every it girl is going to be wearing it. And the first it girl to wear it is going to be us. <laughs> Yes. So, I have watch been- this space. <laughs> right? I need the receipts. <laughs> So I have been ordering, I kind of got hyper fixated on it. I tend to hyper fixate on everything I do and then I become obsessed with that thing for a certain amount of time and then I kind of move on from it. But I was hyper fixating on the triangle bikinis. So I was on Poshmark searching for the perfect ones. The thing about these bikinis, and this is why I wanted to talk about it, other than just, you know, setting the record straight that I am doing it now. So when like a really famous person does it in June, I'm not copying them. I know that they're not copying me, but I'm not copying them. You really did say this first. Like you said it like a month ago. Yeah, I I can send you my Poshmark order. I already have acquired three. Oh, another one. 
Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So the annoying thing about them, though, is they're the most annoying, ridiculous clothing items I've ever encountered in my life. And I remember the first day that I was ordering one, Rebecca was over and you were like, oh, can can you wash that in with like your, your normal wash? Mm. And I was like, oh, I mean, I would think so. Like, I don't know why not. No, you can't. Yeah. You can't do anything with them. You can't even fold them. Right. You can't throw them in your drawer. Like you have to treat these like they're royalty. Yeah. Which it, they kind of are. It's not a forgivable fabric. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> but it's just not. <laughs> yeah, it's really not. So the first one I got was the coral one. Also, it kind of sounds gross to buy secondhand bathing suits because you're like, okay, isn't that like buying secondhand underwear? I did research and I found out that the germs that you would be scared of do not live in fabric. And if you wash it once, like with just normal soap, it will clean it. So I have been going and doing like 10 step routines when I order a new one where I spray it with fabric sanitizer and then you let it air dry and then you do it again, rinse it out like so many times. So by the time I actually put these on my body, they are clean. But while I was doing this, the coral one, it gets a stain on it. I'm like, where did this stain come from? Oh, no. No idea. So then I have to wash it again. And then I leave it sitting there to dry. They're outlined in black. The black fabric ink ran onto the other, like the front of the swimsuit bled onto the back of it. Wait, what? It's it's hard to just, I should have taken a picture of it, but basically a picture a bikini where like all the edges are outlined black. And so the front is obviously smaller than the back. So on the back picture, like black lines outlining of the front. No. Yeah, it literally bled through. I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh. So then I use that dye remover. Mm -hmm. Like if your clothing runs in the washer, you can use this. It worked. It came out, thankfully. But another thing about these these bathing suits is that they are the tiniest yeah not least forgiving bathing suits i've ever seen did you ever have one no but i I've, i remember that being a thing when they were really popular like order like four sizes up basically yes yeah i'm like who is wearing these like i cannot imagine a doll yeah like adults wearing them like no literally they're made for like a baby doll yeah because they're they're insanely small so i started with a small to medium i just ordered a large and the large is actually the most comfortable Mm -hmm. still very small though like i i want like xxxl in these things so i'm thinking about how to make them cooler and i'm like am i insane to think that i can like cut them and like (laughs) re like sew them to be the bathing suit shape that I like I think you could do it you're like handy with stuff like that my cousin's good at sewing so I I might ask if I can commission her to cut up these bathing suits and like sew a new piece of neoprene in them so that I'm gonna say the neoprene's gonna be an issue yeah and then also those bathing suits back in the day they were like very like full coverage which isn't bad but I have a flat ass so (laughs) full coverage on me is just not it and I could wear a thong bikini and there would still not be a lot hanging out of it so (laughs) I need I need cheeky 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 so I need to cut those things so we'll see how it goes but the tops are iconic I'm excited for this journey you have two months till summer yeah so chop chop you need one too. Mm-hmm. Everyone listening, get on the train. Wait, can we do a photo shoot on the beach this summer with them and yes. like slap a sepia filter and <gasps> unironically post it? <laughs> yes, but we need to include something that was invented this year. Yeah. So that people know that we just took it. Okay. That would be iconic. Well, I think people would know based on the fact that we are together. We don't look oh. like 14 <laughs> oh, anymore. True. True. I mean, I don't know. I could upgrade my skincare routine by then. (laughs) So watch out. But we'll just include like the newspaper. Yeah. Like today's date in it. Wow. I'm excited. Yeah. This is good. We should we should literally bring back those like artsy beach photos from 2014 through 2016. And we like do this. (gasps) We're doing it. It's done. It's It's done. done. Flower crowns. Oh, my God. And Dude. you know what's playing in the background? Roses by the Chainsmokers. <laughs> Let's go. My Let's go. dream. <laughs> Literally. Iconic. Do you think that Vegas would play Roses if we went? 
Probably. We're deciding if we should go to Vegas pre-summer. It's looking very, very expensive it's right now. It's looking a little bleak. Yeah. Every time I check it, <laughs> it's not never. any cheaper. No, certain, and certainly the, not. The flights aren't any better either. So oh. I don't know if it's going to happen, but. We should make our own Vegas at the W rooftop in Philly. <laughs> the W rooftop. The pool's not even on the roof. Okay. Um, I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. We'll figure it out. So anyway, stay tuned. It's the summer of triangle bikinis, neoprene, full coverage, (laughs) XXXXL, regardless of what size you wear in a normal bikini, you need an XXXXXL unless you're four years old. Right, right. I was actually, I'm not even kidding. These bathing suits, if I don't cut them up, like I might give them to my cousin's children and be like, this is for a child. Like, (laughs) and it doesn't stretch either. No, that's so frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually mind blowing and they are so low cut. Mm. Like they do not cover anything where you want it to. Yeah. They're right. just so low. I'm like, holy shit. Like who are these made for? I don't know. Kendall Jenner. Yeah. Back in the day. Mm-hmm. Oh, I will say a life update that's is like does not matter at all to anyone but myself. I had my favorite salad today. <laughs> not the one I just made. I, I did just make a salad that Kelly witnessed for lunch. Basically, it's like a chicken cutlet, kale, cabbage, sweet potato with like a spicy chipotle dressing situation. And I get it from this local place. It's just so good, you guys. Like, wow. Hyper fixation. On that. On that. Mm Mm-hmm. That sounds interesting. I wouldn't think that those would go together. I know. I felt the need to share in case anyone wants to make it themselves. Yeah. I could easily make it myself and not pay for it. But like, I think it's like the bowl they use too. It's like the perfect circular bowl. Like the ones at Sweetgreen just bother me so much. (laughs) Like, I, I don't like the shape. You know, oh. and this is like a deep bowl. It's nice. like the one they use at Honey Grow, which is like smaller width and then deeper. And the one at Sweet Green, it's like flatter and it bothers me. Huh. That's definitely a me problem. That's okay. <laughs> You're entitled to it. But it just makes eating it so much more satisfying. So there you go. Love that for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's, like, that's my life update. <laughs> well, that's a good transition. We can get into our topic early. So your sharing your oh. favorite recipes, which yes. is going to make you healthier today. Today we're talking about little tips and tricks to make your life easier Mm -hmm. and I wanted to give a disclaimer before we get into it these are not going to solve the deepest problems in the world and all the things that we say it might not be the most groundbreaking thing you've ever heard but I think that sometimes you kind of just need to hear it again yeah and Maybe the way that we say it is slightly different than the way somebody else said it and it can spark something in you and you can be like, oh, wait, you know what? I should do that. And then you can comment and tell us all of your tips that we can do and all of our lives can just get a little bit easier. I love that. So I feel like your first one was that salad because that sounds so good. And that's such an easy way to have a fulfilling meal that's healthy. Yes, exactly. Fun. Should we just jump in? Should we dive into the deep end of our thoughts? We should. (laughs) This was actually one of the shortest intros we've done in a long time. What else could we go on about? I feel like this episode's going to lead to a lot of tangents. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like I I have a lot to say. Actually, you're right. So maybe we just get into it. Okay. Okay, cool. So we're going to be going through categories of sorts and kind of giving both of our takes for each like overall life category. Are there any you want to start with? Sure. What's your favorite of these topics? Maybe self-improvement. Okay. (laughs) Self-improvement up first. Wait, also, this is funny. Under miscellaneous, my first one, I was like clearly in a mood when I wrote this. I have not giving your energy to losery people. Oh my God. That is... That's a great one to start with, actually, because that is true all the time, 24-7, 365 days a year. When you stop doing that, your life just instantly gets easier and better, period. There's literally nothing else to say. That is so true. (laughs) No, that's so true. And also, like, sometimes I feel like we get caught up in having feelings that are, like, way too strong about losers or just, like, people (laughs) that don't treat us well. Yeah. Or people we don't actually like, like deep down. And I feel like once you get through that, it's like when you're, if you're like dating someone and then they ghost you or like, I don't know, they decide to dump you and it breaks your heart a little bit. And then you like miss them for a while. But like the day that you stop missing them Mm -hmm. is like the best feeling. Yeah. And you just stop giving your emotional energy and time to this person that is literally a loser because they don't like you. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Facts. I'm with you. So that was my first one. Okay. Do you want to go? No, you can go. I feel like I went on a tangent on that one. It's okay. All facts. Um, I guess under self-improvement, I had taking walks, which is... I don't want to keep repeating that it's not groundbreaking because we did just disclaim that, but mm-hmm. I do feel the need to say that again for this because like, it's the least groundbreaking advice I could ever give. I just know recently, especially like walking is like all I've been doing mm-hmm. with my free time and it's just been so nice and it's hard to power through. Like We live in the Northeast, so the weather is not ideal, but even just in these days, like powering through, forcing yourself to put on your galoshes and get out there like don't make excuses take a walk bitch yeah (laughs) that's all i have to say (laughs) no that's such a good point and walking is so healthy for you not that it's underrated but i think that sometimes health people fitness people are like yeah let's run let's do all these other cardio simply walking is so so healthy yeah for most people yeah so So i totally agree with you especially in the middle of your work day if you're able to Mm -hmm. and you work remote i think midday walks have really helped me even if it's just like in between meetings 15 minutes like around my block you know just like getting it in yeah i really need to do that i want to challenge myself to do that more especially now that it's spring and hopefully the weather is getting a little bit warmer yes and hopefully it's here to stay Mm -hmm. (laughs) i don't think this is gonna work with the cards i know we tried you guys disclaimer i got these note cards because I feel like it makes us look more legit as a podcast and I was like I don't feel like writing all of my notes because there's so much to write so I'm just gonna hold my phone behind them but because we're not recording in the studio today we also have to hold the microphones (laughs) and it's just not working so I'll be reading off my phone okay for self-improvement actually I'll go off of that go to the gym when it works for you don't put pressure on a specific time to go and then also a few times a week is better than not at all. So basically, the first part of that came from this idea that I talked about it with Jimmy a few weeks ago, but I feel like people put so much like praise onto going to the gym in the morning. Like if you go to the gym before 7 a.m. or before 8 a.m., I feel like people are like, oh my God, you're amazing. You're killing it. How do you do it? But then if someone said, oh yeah, I go to the gym every day at 8 p.m., people would be like, oh, (laughs) Like, it is just as good for you, you know, regardless of when you can get there. As long as you go, that is so impressive and it's so healthy. So whenever you have time, do it. You know, don't hold yourself to these, like, schedules that just seem idyllic when maybe they are, but maybe it's just not possible for you. Yeah, I feel like I try to remind you of that because we're, like, opposites a little bit where you're such a night person and I'm such a morning person. And I feel like you are so, like, hard on yourself about that. But it's, like, being a night person is just as valid. Like, if you're, like, active and motivated at 1 a.m., like, I would just say roll with it. Yeah. And sleep until 10, like, you know? Yeah. I really do. I am hard on myself for that because... I like being productive in the morning, but it's just so hard for me. Like, but I can stay up until 1 a.m. like doing something productive, but then I'm not going to be getting up at 7 if I go to bed at 1 or 1.30. And that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. The second part of it is if you can commit to a few times a week, it's better than not at all. This also came from like deep problems Mm. um, that I'm not going to fully get into now. But I used to be in this mindset of like, if you're not going to the gym six days a week, why are you going? Like if you're not going to go Monday through Friday and then sometimes on Saturday and Sunday, it's not worth it. That is not true. No. If you can work it into your life and schedule to go to the gym even two days a week three is amazing four is amazing like any time that you can get there it is good for you so get out there not even I'm saying the gym but I just mean exercising in general if you can't commit to five days don't let it stop you from going three days right or two days for sure that's so valid yeah Wait, I wrote this like at night the other night and sometimes I'm just like in silly moods when it's late night and I'm delirious. I wrote going on Pinterest because it's peaceful over there. But it is. I've been on Pinterest a lot these days. Just like it's the only social media platform where you don't really interact with other people. Like it's the algorithm is like made for you. There's no comments. Maybe there are and I just don't see them. But like regardless, it's not the primary feature. Mm -hmm. And you're just looking at pretty pictures, looking at recipes you want to try. It's so nice and lovely. And I just love adding to my little mood boards. Period. Love it. I love Pinterest. So good. The only issue with Pinterest that I have is I am fed so many 
beautiful dresses and gowns. Oh, yeah. Well. And I feel that it's elevating my taste so high that I'm not kidding. Every single time I see a dress that I like, I'm like, finally, a dress I like. I shit you not, it is (laughs) $10,000. Every (laughs) single dress I like is from Moda Operende and Mm -hmm. it's Oscar de la Renta and it's between five and $10,000. Yeah, you need to fix your algorithm. (laughs) But they're so pretty. (laughs) It really makes me wonder, like, do I live in ignorance and I never look at these beautiful dresses and Mm -hmm. I never know what I'm missing? Or do I look at them and feel sad that I do not have them and I cannot wear them? to my cousin's wedding well maybe there's a happy medium (laughs) to be found yes if anyone has any oscar de la renta dupes or moda (laughs) operandi dupes that i can shop from please let me know you should become like an ebay girly like people are really into ebay with um designer finds and you just set up alerts and just you constantly are in the know of who's selling those things that is such a good idea it's like a fun little hobby i feel like love that i actually will i'll okay. look into it do it ever since i've been on my poshmark triangle bikini grind i've been yes i've been into it wow did i just make your life easier yes <laughs> my next one for self-improvement was reading books when it comes to reading books audiobooks can be just as powerful and podcasts are great for learning so if you're one of those people where you struggle with reading or maybe it just takes you really long to read a book because you're a slow reader maybe you are so so busy that you don't even have an hour to devote to reading at the end of the day I think that audiobooks or even podcasts like TED Talks those are so powerful so if you can consume a book and pay attention and and learn all the lessons from that book via an audiobook or a podcast or a TED Talk, that is still valuable. And that's still going to make you a better person when you implement the teachings and give you value in your life. Hmm. And I feel like it just takes a little bit of the pressure off. Yeah, that's so true. I've been on my podcast grind lately because I have not been super motivated to read a book. I love reading. Anytime I'm in the zone, I like I'm so happy afterwards. But sometimes getting in the zone is just like it feels impossible Mm -hmm. and all I want to do at the end of a day especially these days is like just watch TV or just Mm -hmm. watch a movie like I just can't use my brain for one more second of the day even though reading it's like again once you're in it you're not using I don't know it's not as laborious as like you work it up to be yeah that's a good point you know so sometimes you just have to do it but like I agree I think podcasts like they can just be just as valuable yeah no that's a good point as you get older I do think you realize that once you're like in a book like it kind of you almost like don't even see the words anymore yeah especially if it's like fiction like I I get that reading like business books or self-help books Nonfiction of any kind, honestly, it can be a little more laborious. Yeah. <laughs> I'll use the same <laughs> word. But fiction, it's like when you're in the zone, like you're kind of just like picturing it in your head. Yeah. And you're not even really seeing the words mm-hmm. like the way that you are when you first start. Yeah. Yeah. It's just forcing yourself to pick it up is like the hard part for me right, right now. But And like put your phone and computer down and like make yes. everything else silent. That's my problem at least. Yeah. Yeah. Distractions, man. Dopamine. Yeah. Don't go for the dopamine. Go for the serotonin. Honen. Oh, such a good tip. But it's really hard. Like the it dopamine is. is just right there. I know. And it's just refresh, refresh, refresh. I was actually proud of myself yesterday because so on my phone, I set an hour long limit for TikTok and Instagram combined. And there have been a really? lot of days where I hit that limit very quickly. And sometimes I hit ignore for 15 minutes, especially I don't do it on Instagram. I really think Instagram is so boring. I know. And unfulfilling. Like it it is just not it anymore. But anyway, TikTok, I do sometimes hit that like 15 minutes, 15 minutes. I didn't reach my limit yesterday until like 1130 p.m. Yup. That's really good. Isn't it? I mean, for someone with a TikTok addiction, I was going to say, I was proud of myself. You've come a long way in a week. Yeah. I was really trying to not go on it. Yeah. Go you. Thank you. Wow. I won't go into this fully like personally, but I think investing in yourself, specifically your mental health is like the best investment you can make. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing this in like multiple ways again that I'm not going to like fully get into but I also think like I did this breath work and meditation workshop or it was like a sound bath one of those types of things never done anything like that in my life it was just like like it's really stuck with me like you think those things are just really 
like woo woo and like whatever but like the more I think about it I'm like that actually it did leave a mark on me and it wasn't that's good I don't think it was expensive necessarily but it was definitely like I would say the price of like a night out or like a dinner you know normally I would be like oh but like it's not not that it's not worth it but like this time last year I feel like it would have had less of an impact on me but this year I'm really on this like journey and really choosing to invest in things like that instead of like shopping or I do think I'm even going out less to be honest like I'm just like on this path and it's really nice and That's it's good. hard because it's like you're it's, it brings up a lot I think for people but then we had a group discussion after the like sound bath and this one guy came in and he was really late but I'm glad he was there because he kind of like he was talking a lot and one thing he said was like we all think that no one thinks about the these things the way we do and we think that no one is like having these deeper discussions about spirituality and mental health but like that's why you do stuff like this to like have a forum to talk about with I don't know it was just really cool it was like different than going out with friends and maybe bringing that up like you kind of talk about it for a little and then you move on to like other topics and like work and favorite bars like I don't know like not all the time but sometimes and this it's like no like we were talking about just like deep stuff for like 45 minutes yeah and I'm like dang like this is kind of nice I want to go to the next one with you yeah that sounds amazing yeah I will let you know yeah I that's so true about having those conversations and like the time and place to do it because it is so true that I think as people get older like especially our life phase you're going out a lot like a lot of times the times that you see friends are in drinking settings like you're not really having these deep conversations like maybe you did when you were in high school and college with your roommates or your friends so that is really nice that it's like that is the place where you can bring up basically anything and it's not gonna be like all right that's a little heavy like let's not talk about that right now it's gonna kill the vibes you know yeah right that is the vibe so it can't be killed wow (laughs) it could be killed by bringing up something superficial and dumb like tiktok (laughs) like our jobs i'm just kidding right (laughs) Okay, my next one is, I wrote, go to the doctor, lol. Oh, that's actually, that's good. Yeah. Make the dentist appointment, make the doctor appointment, and just get past the initial anxiety. I think especially with dentist appointments, because if you don't go to the doctor for a while, at least this is in my experience, they don't really, like, shame you. They're just kind of like, okay, cool. Yeah, you need a tennis shot or something like that. But I've heard stories of dentists not my dentist, actually. I actually didn't experience this, but I feel like a lot of people that I know have this time in their life where they didn't go to the dentist for like five to seven years. And it's really like from college to like right after college, maybe when your parents stop making the appointments for you or like life gets busy and you don't think about the dentist. And then it's like, oh, but when I go back, they're going to be like, you haven't been here. That did not happen to me. If you're nervous about that, just tell yourself that If anyone were to say something like that, you can just be like, yeah, well, I'm here now. And that's it, you know? So sometimes it takes so much to just make the appointment. So do it literally right now if you need to, or do it in an hour. Set a reminder on on your phone to do it when you get home tonight and just make the appointment. Go on ZocDoc, whatever you want. I'm a big advocate for the dentist. And a lot of people in our age group don't go. Yeah. And did you know your teeth health is directly correlated to literally your entire body like your mental health like no I didn't yeah oh it's all intertwined like people think oh it's just teeth no if you're feeling dumb like it's because you're not going to the dentist what (laughs) wait really okay I should have heard it like that but like (laughs) you should look it up it's really all connected wow teeth health is really really important you guys (laughs) also it's only gonna save you money later because when your teeth start rotting away and you have to get root canal after root canal after root canal that shit adds up a root canal is thousands of dollars (laughs) yeah thousands every single time sometimes they don't even work sometimes you have to get a root canal and then it doesn't work so then you have to get the same exact tooth root canal like two weeks later no yeah like (laughs) that sucks do it for your finances and do it for your brain like let's go people totally chop chop (laughs) i can't believe i just said your teeth health will make you dumb like (laughs) i love it i stand by it okay some other quick fire self-improvement more whole foods less sugar you've never heard it before in your life that's a good tip though honestly it's always good to remember that magnesium before bed not melatonin i want to start trying this I want to start trying the magnesium before bed. It gives you really insane dreams, like to the point where I feel like my brain hurts when I wake up. However, 
I got a lot of rest. Oh. Good quality rest, I should say. That's what happens to me with melatonin. I don't like it. And then I wake up after like two hours in like sweats with the worst nightmares. Like, oh no, you got to switch to mag. Well, I don't take it anymore. I took it like maybe five times total. And every time I'm like, oh, it's not going to be that bad. It's not going to be as bad as last time. And it always is. And I'm like, all right, I'm done. Yeah, I know. Magnesium for sure. Um, Journaling, even if it's hard. Mm, so true reaching out to people when you need help yeah like being vulnerable yeah and then self-discipline like tough love with yourself you know i need that holding yourself accountable i need that yeah actually my last one for self-improvement was eating healthy and here's a really simple tip now you can buy groceries online and someone will literally go grocery shopping for you and if you feel like you always forget to go grocery shopping or like i don't know what foods to buy like do the research one time and then pick a grocery store do online order and it will remember your order and you can just get it every single week the same food that's good and then you don't have to think about it anymore bam okay next up we are going to talk about work and productivity tips the first one i have is time blocking Mm. i considered getting an actual block on amazon because they sell these now because oh that thing you like flip over yeah that's cool and i'm like I don't like clutter. I don't like having like useless stuff. So I didn't. But I do think in general for me, it's more about figuring out or I have figured out what times of day I'm most productive and trying to just like stick to this schedule of in the morning. I'm the most on top of things. I'm the most focused. So that's when I do like my heavy lifting stuff. And then in the afternoon is when I try to leave some of the things that like just require a little bit less brain power. Mm-hmm. Not every day looks like this because sometimes you have meetings and like not everything in every day is under your control. But if it is, I try to like really do everything I can in the morning. Everything that's like heavy because yeah. yeah so just like kind of knowing when you're most in it mentally yeah. and time blocking accordingly. No, that's so true. I was one of mine was doing like easier things first because one of my friends who is very into like self-improvement and meditation told me that it might seem like the opposite. Like you should start with the task you hate and like get all those ones done. But really it's better for your brain to do all of the easiest tasks and like get five things off your list, like right off the bat, your easiest five things. Because then you're like, yeah, I'm in this mindset of like getting all this stuff done. And you're in like that winning mindset, you know? Yes. And then move on to maybe the harder thing. Right. My first thing for work and productivity is finding a stimulant that actually works for you. So whether it's your favorite coffee, tea, or a natural supplement that helps you focus. I had focus issues for so long. And in college, I'm like, oh, I'm just bad at studying. And then it like followed me into the real world. And I like could not focus even at work. And I'm like, all all right, I need to like do something about this. One thing I found recently is a natural supplement we've talked about on the podcast before. It's Magic Mind. It is an all natural health and wellness shot that you can drink in the morning. I have been drinking Magic Mind actually every morning. I heard about it from our podcast and since then I have had the subscription and I drink it every single day when I am working at a desk on my computer and I have a lot to do and I want to get stuff done. It helps me focus so much and I really would suggest it if anyone feels like they have a hard time focusing. I drink it with coffee and tea so it doesn't replace my coffee but those two together just kind of like gets me in the zone. It has all these natural ingredients that all work together that just help your brain work in a better way and it just keeps you focused. Thankfully we are working with Magic Mind and they are offering our listeners a discount. So if you're interested in trying Magic Mind, you can use our code STOP THE INTERNET 20 for a discount on the website. If you do want to try Magic Mind, I recommend trying it for a whole work week or seven days in a row because the more you drink it consistently, the better it works for you. And I really do think that's true. Like from Monday to Friday, if I drink it every morning, I'm getting so much done and I'm in such a productive mood. Also, just one more benefit. Magic Mind donates five cents from each bottle to mental health charities that help U.S. homeless communities and their 
they're 100% carbon neutral. So that's just another benefit. Not only is it helping you, it's helping other people as well. Once again, if you want to try Magic Mind, you can use our code Stop the Internet 20 and it gets you a huge discount. So that'll get you 20% off a one-time purchase. Or if you want to try the subscription, it'll get you up to 48% off of your first subscription. So I definitely think it's worth it. Try it out. Let me know how it goes for you. If you work from home, getting out of the house has been a game changer for me. Honestly, almost every day I go to a coffee shop, which like at first I felt guilty about because I'm spending money on coffee and like you have to buy something. But the more I thought about it, I'm like, it's doing a lot for not only my mental health, but also like my productivity levels. Just being around other people that are working yeah, does a lot. And if you go to the same places, you like see the same people and it just like has this community feel. So... That is a pro tip, but it's definitely a privileged one. But like if you're able to do it, I would highly recommend doing it. Yeah, it's it's interesting to think about it like that and being like, oh, I spend five dollars a day on coffee. Like you can. Yeah. And there's all those people that are like, you could invest that. Into, you could buy like, a home. One <laughs> K millionaire. It's like, yeah, that's true. But if you are going and working in a coffee shop, you're not just paying five dollars for coffee. You're paying five dollars, like you said, to get out of the house, to go and sit there at a table that yeah. one of their employees employees cleaned and you're paying for their electricity and the wi-fi and the rent of their building that you are inhabiting in that like True. two hours that you're there so to go and sit in someone else's private property yeah is not free so that's built into the price of the coffee so yeah it does kind of seem like if you're like yeah it's seven dollars for my coffee but you sit there for four hours and i'm sure you use their bathroom like you yeah. probably get the water from the free water thing like that's not free it's for it's, you it's almost like a co-working space in a yeah. way i thought about paying for one of those last year and then i was like they like sell you on all these things like free coffee free some of them have um like kombucha on tap like trendy Ooh, things oh like God, that. that sounds amazing and yeah but it's also like like, but isn't that what a coffee shop kind of is? Yeah. I guess like with a co-working space, if you have a lot of meetings, you take them there and you can rent out rooms and like you have like a guaranteed spot and a coffee shop. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you walk in, you have to walk right back out because there's no seats. But like if you know where to go and you plan your day accordingly and you know when not to go at peak times. I don't know. Like I kind of view it more like that where I'm like I'm paying for a co-working space versus like yeah. shelling out money on cappuccinos. And I try to also just like not get cappuccinos. Yeah. I feel you on that. It's not free to go and like sit in those places. So like whether you spend your money on a coffee shop or a co-working space, like either one of them could benefit you. Yeah. And it does. So yeah. try it. My next thing for work and productivity was eating the same things every day. Ooh. So this kind of sounds boring, but I drink the exact same smoothie every single day for like breakfast slash lunch. Like by the time I drink it, it's usually like 1 p.m. I never think about like, oh, what am I going to have for breakfast? What am I going to have for lunch? Because I drink and eat the same things every single day. Yes, it sounds boring. It's like, oh, don't you ever want to switch it up? No. <laughs> From Monday through Friday, if I'm working from home, I crave the smoothie. It's like part of me at this point. It's like me with the salad. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. And I don't spend time like walking around my kitchen being like, hmm, what to do today? I spend like that time working and then I yeah. drink the smoothie and I don't think about it. Going off of that, another one of mine similar was wear the same outfit every single day. And I know that's also, it sounds weird, but no. I wake up and I put the same outfit on every day. I have like 20 of almost the exact same shirt and I have multiple pairs of sweatpants every single day in the winter. Get yeah. up, put on that shirt and sweatpants and socks. And then in the summer, if it's warm, that shirt, shorts, and socks. Yeah. And then it's already a workout outfit if I decide to work out that day. And I don't think about what I have to wear if I'm working from home. And I, I, yeah. I see videos all the time. This is a, kind of a side tangent, but people being like, if you work from home, get up, like, get ready, do your skincare, and do your makeup, put a little mascara on. No. I could not agree less. Same. I agree with skincare. Of course, your skincare, do your SPF. I am not touching my makeup bag if I'm not seeing anyone that day. Why would I waste my... Mascara costs money. Mm -hmm. Why would I waste my money? I'm not looking in the mirror. They're right. like, well, look good, feel good. Yeah, that's true. If I were to be in photos or look in the mirror all day or know yeah. that I'm at a bar where there's like 40 people around me at any given moment. I why? agree. I'm working from home. I'm never touching makeup. I'm not even wasting my tinted sunscreen. No. Anyway, 
That's <laughs> another rant. No, that's so fat. And then it's like, at least for me, makeup just, it's like one extra thing at the end of the day I have to do. I have to take yes. off. I'm like, no, like even when I do go to coffee shops, I'm still not putting on makeup. Like no. I just, I don't care. No, that's I, another reason why I do skincare too. Yeah. Like yeah. I spend so much time and money buying my prescription topicals and my non-comedogenic face lotions. <laughs> Yeah. Why would I then ruin my skin with makeup? Like, no, I do wear makeup a lot, but not when I'm working from home alone. Same. Not necessary. Yeah. It's really not. No. Um, I have one more that's just simple, but putting your phone on DND, oh, baby. Such a good one. I need I've to do it been more. doing it a lot more this year. I always do it every night, but like during the day this year, I've been doing it more because I'm just like, if someone texts me, I'm going to look at it and I'm just going to feel obligated to respond in a timely mm-hmm. manner yada 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 and then i'm gonna be looking on all the apps like no if i put it on do not disturb face down away i'm not even it's out of sight out of mind so yeah i think that's just like an easy thing to do yeah yeah that's a great tip i need to do that more let's move on actually i'll move on to morning slash skincare routine because this kind of goes off of my last tip number one tip is simplify in my opinion using one to two products consistently is better than touching every single issue you have and only doing it every once in a while. And a quote that I heard from a dermatologist is, the best sunscreen is the one that you'll actually wear. So Mm. I feel that way with skincare. Like you could have this like 30 step skincare routine that hits every single problem, every type of skin, like anything in the book that you can think of. But if you only do it when you're in the mood for it because it's so tiring and it takes so much time, that's really not benefiting you that much because the human body thrives on consistency and routine. So if you can lock down a skincare routine that takes care of the three issues that are the most important to you and you can do it every single day that is going to be more beneficial for you in the long run yes and that's that's what I do that's my personal skincare routine it's only a few products but I do it consistently and it works for me and I probably could do more but I feel like I'm not going to yeah I kind of wrote down something similar about keeping it simple and this reminds me of during covid i like went through this phase where i was obsessed with watching dermatologists react to celebrity skincare routines on youtube and it's like their whole channel is they just react to other people's skincare routines because you know vogue beauty does like beauty secrets and they profile different celebrities who talk through their routines and i just love these videos because all of their critiques were always about the same thing which is like this is too many products right and a lot of people use products products that cancel each other out or they'll yeah. use like I'm not going to mention the celebrity but I'll never forget it because I'm I kid you not it was like 45 steps it was like five masks and the dermatologist was like those are doing nothing you need yeah. one of those maybe once a week and she was like yeah I do this every day and he was like it's such a waste of money and like I right. guess you can afford it because you're at that status but like what are you doing with like five sheet masks on your face in the course of one routine yeah it's ridiculous and And like, it's sad because like, you know, I think not everyone uses their discernment when they watch things like this. And all they do is go to like the info box and click buy, buy, buy because their favorite celebrity is doing it. And it's like a lot of people don't realize this is doing nothing for your skin. And like, especially your unique skin, it could be doing damage. And it's like, what are we doing? Yes. (laughs) You need like almost every dermatologist said the same thing. You need literally like maybe three products, like maybe four, you know, moisturizer, Mm -hmm. a serum that works for you, a cleanser. And the way that this whole industry is like built to make you buy masks, serums, oils, like you don't need these things. I agree. And I'm glad you said the thing about dermatologists being the ones that are commenting on those videos because I have two different things that I do. One is in the morning, one is at night. And they're both prescriptions given to me by a dermatologist that were made for my specific problems. And they said, do not use these at the same time. Like this one is for the morning and then wash your face and do this one at night. And then when you wake up, wash your face, start over. Right. Because they cancel each other out. I would have never known that if a doctor didn't tell me. So if I just looked up, like, how do I solve my acne problems? I have this problem and this problem. I would probably be fed these two products. And I would probably put them all over my face all day, all together, and it wouldn't do anything. Yeah. But a doctor needed to tell me how to actually use them to solve my problem. 
And that goes into my second one, very similar to what you just said, basically the exact same thing, is do not get caught up in skincare routines that you see on the internet and start using products that you specifically need for your medical needs. And we kind of talked about this on a past episode, but skincare is a medical issue. So like, if you saw somebody on the on TikTok doing a specific physical therapy routine, I doubt that you would start doing that physical therapy routine because that's not what you need. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe it is, but it's possible that it's not what you need. So why do you automatically do a skincare routine that someone else does? It's a medical problem for a lot of people. And I also think that one dermatology appointment a year is all you need to customize the skincare routine that you need. So obviously in the beginning, sometimes if you have like really bad acne, it might take a couple appointments and like a couple different things that they try on you to see what works. But once you get the product that works for you, you see the dermatologist one time a year, one hour out of 365 days, and you have this skincare routine that is made for you, that works specifically for your problems. And it's probably cheaper if you have health insurance because you can buy them as prescriptions. Yeah, that's my opinion. (laughs) I think one more thing about the skincare of it all, and not to like sound like a know-it-all, but I have done a lot of research and like I do go to the dermatologist once a year and they literally have said like a lot of these really trendy products there's such a little amount yes of the concentrated whatever it yes. claims to be if it's let's say it's vitamin D that it's claiming to be a solution it's so little that it like doesn't do anything yes and it's not every brand and like whatever but it's a lot of them you know but again it's just like capitalism (laughs) no it really is and this is something that makes me mad because the reason that it's such a small amount well I guess on top of the fact that they just want to make money and the ingredient could cost money is some of these ingredients are harsh on your skin Mm -hmm. like it is a medication it's kind of the same as like buying medicine over the counter like Allegra versus Allegra D you have to buy it through the pharmacist like you can't just buy it willy-nilly same with skincare like you can't just buy these ingredients willy-nilly because they're medical treatments like it's not always safe to have them in these like really high doses in these random like beauty products in Sephora and people putting it on any part of their body like at any time any amount like that's literally not safe sometimes so another benefit of going to the dermatologist and getting a skincare routine that's meant for you is they can write you a prescription for exactly how much you need and how much your skin can handle remember that you can literally get chemical burns from some of this stuff So let a doctor that you trust give you the routine that's going to work for you. And don't waste your money on these like celebrity skincare routines that who even knows what is in them. And they're a lot of times being paid to talk about them, even on these popular channels. And it's not always disclosed. That is a good point. That is a great point. Just so you know. Yeah, that's a very good point. Sorry, I feel like I really sounded like a know-it-all, but... No, me too. It's just, like, I'm passionate about this. Yeah. Because I really had... Like, I went through a phase where I was using so many of these, like, serums. A big one is hyaluronic acid that really does absolutely nothing. Wait, really? Yeah, according to... (laughs) I haven't done, like, medical journal research, but I... You have to be careful about the brands is really what it is. I shouldn't say it does nothing. It just depends on, like, what brand you're using. And a lot of them, it's not enough of an amount to make a difference on your skin. But that's for me. Like, that's my skin. So. Right. But it's also just important to keep in note. Yeah, totally. In mind, not in note. That was all of mine for skincare. Yeah, I feel like that was most of mine. Okay. Yeah. What should we do next? What's our next category? Money. Money. Okay. We love talking about money. We talk about money a lot. (laughs) We talk about money all the time. (laughs) Give me your first one. Okay, well, on that note, I literally wrote down having more candid conversations about money with your friends, family, partner, whoever, because... I think it removes like the stigma around it and it helps you realize that you're probably doing better than you think you are. And even if you're struggling, like so is everyone right now. It's a really hard economic time. Mm -hmm. I guess with candid, I don't necessarily mean like I don't really talk about like what I make necessarily, but I just like talking about money, if that makes sense. Like I'm not out here on these streets spewing my salary all over, but like, do you know what I mean? Just like talking about it. Like we were talking about investing earlier this week you know I don't know it's important yeah I think especially talking about money with people that know what they're talking about so maybe if you have a few friends that are really into investing 
pick their brain, ask them questions. It's never a bad idea to learn more about it. I agree with that. Yeah. There's so much to say about like investing and like having good money habits. I don't really have any specific tips about that right now, but one huge one that is so easy that every single person can do right now if you haven't already is put your credit cards on auto pay. So at least it pays the minimum balance. I am also a person that I never spend outside of my credit card limit. So I can basically always pay off my credit card fully because I don't, I try to not spend that much money. So I put it on like to pay the full amount because the amount of times that I have missed the payment and it's not because I can't pay it. It's not even a lot of money. I just missed the reminder that I set one of the so many of the reminders that I've set on my phone to remind me to do it. And then I have to pay $35, $50. Like it makes me furious to waste money. And when I could have just done the simplest thing, aka open my phone and click pay. And because I missed that, I now have to spend $50, right. which is like the late payment fee on top of like the interest fee. It pisses me off to no end. So I'm like, I can't do this. Credit cards on auto pay. Yeah. Pay like 100% it. of it. Like I, it makes me so annoyed. So we all could do that if you spend within your means. Right. Yeah. At least put it to the minimum payment amount because then you won't have to pay the late fee. So you will still have to pay interest, but at least you're not paying the like $35 late fee or whatever it is with your credit card or bank. Yeah. It's an easy way to not spend over your means either. Because you're not spending it on fees. Right. Or interest. Yeah. Oh my God. I probably, I was going through my business expenses for last year, getting them together. I had three from like three months in a row, I guess, of $50 because I didn't pay my credit card on time. And I'm like, I am furious. It's just annoying. At myself for not clicking the reminder that I already set for myself. Like, yeah, I was so mad. But you know what? I can't dwell on that. I just have to make the decision to not do it again and set myself up for success going forward. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you can't go back. You can only go forward. Yes. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Yep. Sure is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me another one. Teach me about money. Honestly, I don't know that I have a lot more to say. I'm very like, like I love talking about it, but actually doing it like we were talking about Roth IRAs Mm -hmm. earlier this week and it's like I just need to like do these things yeah you do it's really hard like I don't know it's it feels hard to take the first step but if you don't understand how to set up a Roth IRA that's fine start looking into things like Vanguard Fidelity I can't even think of another one Uh, I yeah I use a private company that's smaller and they they handle my Roth IRA and my investments, like things like that. You can also set it up right now. And then if, because we were talking about the other day, like yeah. not wanting them to like take a cut or like paying the investor fee. Also though, like they are doing work and they are making you money that you would not be making if they weren't doing that work. So I think it's justified to work with like a fiduciary, especially like they deserve a cut of the money because right. I'm only making this money because of them. So that's one side of it. Also, you can do both like have some of your money there some of your money and in investments that you're making on like robin hood and other apps like that where you can decide like daily even like what to put a few dollars into do a lot of research like do so much research but i honestly think first steps is like talk to your cpa and like this is tax season especially ask your cpa hey do you have any anyone that you work with that can give me a bit of financial advice or investing advice and right. go from there talk to an expert especially someone in your own state dang you should <laughs> like i should have paid for that <laughs> <laughs> No, I give like the most basic of basic financial advice. No, I love it though. I like love talking about this stuff. Yeah, I do too. I need, I have so much to learn though. Yes. Oh God, me too. This is like the year. No, this is the quarter. Q2. This yes. is it. This is it for me. I need to do it. I've been talking about it. I need to just invest and do the little things and research and yeah, just like I was telling her, like I need to spend a day and just dedicate it to like doing life tasks like this. Yeah. Or even like a couple days because it's a day is kind of hard. But yeah. It, yeah. It takes time. Yeah. To learn about this stuff. I feel like three really, really beneficial things that 
all of us can start doing research on and learning about if you don't know about them already is one, IRA or Roth IRA, two, high yield savings account, and three, health savings account. Hmm. Those are three things that I feel like are a great financial decision if you're picking the right one or, you know, if it works for you. I feel like I'm saying it is. Like, no, yeah. it can be. I don't want to. Don't take yeah. my advice, though, because I don't want you to lose no, money I ever. Will. But those three things, a lot of people benefit from them. Right. Start doing research. And, it, and research takes work. And what you said earlier, personal accountability, it takes accountability. You have to sit down and you actually have to do it. But if you don't do it, you're never going to get the benefits and you're just going to be more anxious later. So and you're never going to really get rich. Gonna, yeah. So yeah. you're never going to go to Bora Bora. <laughs> Make the HSA or Bora Bora is a no go. Okay. Okay, babes. <laughs> That's so true. Yes. Okay. All right. Love it. Do you have more money ones? My other money, money one. Money, 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 money. <laughs> it was really, really simple. And it was just, this is more about like spending on a daily basis, but using what you already have before you buy more things. Yes. So I have so many half used lotions, like half used shampoo bottles. And not that I, I really don't keep buying things. Like it's more kind of like my sister got this, my sister works in dermatology. So it's like, oh, she got this bottle of lotion that was from like a drug rep or something. So anyway, I am literally trying to go through every single like beauty product, skin product, like hair product in my house that I have before I buy one more. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we can all benefit from that is just like use what you have. You know, it helps you not be wasteful and not keep buying things that you really don't need because you already have one. I actually feel that way with clothes. Mm. Because, again, I work from home. So it's like, what am I buying a lot of these clothes for? So I kind of try to keep it like, unless it's for an event or for going out, like more of like a a late night dinner kind of outfit. If it's just like a normal shirt, like to be honest, like I don't need it because I work from home. And like you said, I have the same uniform every day. Right. Literally, I have the same iteration of the same uniform that I wear every single day of the week. So like, why am I going to buy stuff that's just, yeah, it's cute and whatever, but it's going to sit in my closet. And every season I clean out my closet and half of the stuff I'm like, I've worn this like three times and I just need to get rid of it because it's like staring at me. Yeah, I think that would help too. just cut back. No, totally. Snip, snip. That's a really good point. Okay, should we move on to a new category? Yes. Actually, let's move on to home because I feel like that kind of goes hand in hand with my first one for home, which is cleaning out your closet and being really, really critical of your pieces. So I just did this and I am definitely an emotional person. I have a lot of like sentimental ties to physical objects and I was always like that. Mm -hmm. I am getting out of it like as I get older I'm working on it and trying to not have these emotional ties but there were a few items of clothing that I had that I never wear this stuff like specifically I went to Hawaii with my family in 2014 the summer after I graduated high school me and my sister got these shirts there that were matching they were like really cool at the time this like loose fitting white tank top with fringe at the bottom like all fringe around it and then at the top like kind of near like the chest the chesticles it had um <laughs> this like neon like kind of like aztec pattern i wore it a few times like i remember i wore it to my friend's birthday dinner you know like that summer cute i haven't worn this shirt in eight years but i stared at it constantly and you guys now i'm getting sad because i'm thinking about oh, it oh no i gave it away though the other day i oh. cleaned out my closet and i was really really critical i had the boxes in my room like literally for months like remember that day you came over i don't even remember when it yeah, was yeah. it was so long ago and i was like my room is a mess right now i have so many boxes and bags of clothing to donate just donated it 2 days ago but i was so critical i kept going through my i have 3 clothing racks in my room i have my closet and two other racks in there just filled with clothing but because I wear this uniform and like I have some shirts that I love like I go for the same things every time yeah. that like staple black corset crop top the same exact crop top in white like the thing that I feel best in I'm like that's what I want to wear out so mm-hmm. I don't even go for these other clothes so right anyway exactly. I'm ranting I was really being critical of all these pieces of clothing and I got rid of so much my room feels so like light and free yeah. like there's so much less stuff that's like like it feels so like heavy and it just makes you stressed like the less that is like surrounding you the less you have to clean the less you have to organize the less you have to like worry about so 
I was using kind of the Marie Kondo method where when you're getting rid of something, you like literally take a moment and you hold it in your hands and you're like, thank you. Sometimes you like kiss it and you say like, you Aw. and then you let it go. I didn't do that for everything, but it really does help. Yeah. And then I think one more thing that helps is picking a charity or a place to donate these things to that actually means something to you and that you are happy and excited to donate your clothing to. So I found one that's based in Philly that I really, really wanted to donate all this clothing that was in perfect condition, clean, like it's cute. Like someone will really benefit from it. I just don't wear it. I wanted it to go to people that needed it, but that could have access to it for free. I don't want to give it to a thrift store that's just going to turn it turn it around for a profit. Right. Not even give, like if someone walked into this thrift store and was like, hey, I don't have money, but I need clothing. They're going to be like, oh, well, that sucks. Get out. Like, no, I want it to go to people that actually need it mm. for free. So I found this charity in Philly that does that and they collect mm. really like nice clothing and they give it to people for free. So that's where mine went. So I was like actually happy to give this clothing to them and I know yeah. that it's gonna go to people that need it that's huge yeah yeah totally oh I love that that's yeah. a good plug yeah. yeah for me I wrote not feeling like you have to keep up with every trend cycle in terms of mm. home decor because I think it's a big push on well every product is on Instagram and TikTok but like something like a couch is not something you should take lightly like you know yeah. that boucle couch trend that was really big in like 2022 I want to say what is that boucle couch it's like that material like popcorn material couch like the white oh, the white like clout yeah, yes. yeah yeah I know what you're talking about and it's like now that's so out of style and I'm sure a lot of those couches were like thousands of dollars and it's like I, th I think just really take a moment with your home to like figure out what you like and like is this actually something that's my style or is it just the current trend cycle I think thrift stores are a really fun place to source things vintage stores like yeah just like taking a minute because these are big purchases so I, I think it's wasteful to be like being too trendy with home pieces unless you really do love the boucle couch which like all the power to you but I think sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the trends on the Instagram app yeah. No, that's a good point. And like yeah. thinking to yourself, like if people on TikTok were saying how ugly this couch is, would I still like it? Yeah. I feel like I'm being really anti like influencer culture. And listen, I would do it too for a check, but <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> no, that's a good point. Use your discernment when you're shopping for big items and yes, skincare. Totally. End scene. <laughs> no, I agree. I actually felt bad because my parents are redoing their kitchen and they originally had this like dark blue cabinets on the bottom, like lighter color on the top with this like interesting counter choice. And I felt bad, but I was like the exact one that they were looking at. I thought that it looked trendy mm -hmm. and I was like, I just worry about this. Like I really worry that this is not going to be as exciting or beautiful in 10 years from now and my mom was kind of saying how when they were talking to one of the like designers or like I don't know they went to like the cabinet store and the guy had said to them oh nobody does like all gray kitchens anymore like that's out and we're doing like blue on the bottom white on the top and I said but how long is he gonna say that and then he's gonna say oh well nobody's doing blue and white kitchens anymore like why would you yeah. do something that like I don't know it's like oh well that's out and this is in right well, in a few years, you're going to say, well, this is out in that sin. So like, why don't we just get something that's timeless? So yeah. I kind of felt bad, but I was like, really, I basically changed like their mind on every single detail of the kitchen that's getting worked on right now. And I am like, I really, really hope they like this. And I hope that it seems timeless and beautiful because I'm going to feel bad if it doesn't. But like thinking like that, thinking like I am literally going to have this item or this design for so long because interior design, like unless you're a designer and you're changing things all the time, like you literally have your home for so long. Mm -hmm. So yeah, really trying to not get caught up in trends, I think is a great idea. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Investing basically. Yeah. Yeah. One more tip for home. And this kind of goes along with like almost everything, but specifically for items in your home is this like touch it once theory. So there's so many times where like, let's say there's a hat sitting on your bed. You could move the hat to your dresser and then like maybe back to your bed when you're cleaning the dresser and then you put it away in the closet where it goes. But keeping in mind this idea of like touch it once. So when you pick up the hat, 
Put it in the closet where it goes the first time so that you only have to touch it once. It seems so simple, but I really touch things so many times. Yeah. I have been trying to do the touch it once thing and it helps you clean your space faster and get things to where they're supposed to go faster. But it's kind of the same idea even with like dishes and stuff. Like you could put the dish from the counter into the sink and then later go back and put it from the sink into the dishwasher or you could just put it in the dishwasher now and then it saves you a whole step and like yeah it only saves you a couple seconds but that's a couple seconds on every decision you make every moment in your whole life right so it actually does save you a ton of time and I feel like helps you be more organized and just more intentional with the things that you do and the actions that you take in your home yeah I like that intention is important yeah we should all be more thoughtful and intentional Yeah. I feel like life is easier when you are intentional. Yeah. No, for sure. Wow. That was it for home for me. Are we moving on to miscellaneous? Yeah. I just put not overdoing it Mm -hmm. and giving yourself nights to rest. Yeah. I need this reminder literally every single day. Because even sometimes when I have a night of rest, it's like not enough. Like I need two in a row. And that's just where I'm at in my life right now. But I think for a really long time, it was like almost every night I had a plan, even if it was a plan with myself, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to a workout class tonight. And in my head, I'm like, well, that's like a rest night because I'm not seeing anyone. I'm not like being social. But no, it's like just like truly like you log off of work and your plans are nothing. Your plans are to read a book or watch a show, make dinner like that's it. And that's perfectly normal and perfectly okay. But like I'm definitely someone and I think many people our age are people that like convince themselves that if you don't like have things to do, then you're not living a full life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, but you need those nights to rest so that you can live a full life. Like you have to tell yourself that and force yourself to not overdo it. And it's really hard. (laughs) when we live in this society that we do. (laughs) I do feel like you say that a lot. I I say this all the time. You're kind of in the mindset, I feel like, of, oh, I need time to rest. But then when you have plans, you're like, well, you're only young ones. Yeah. Yeah. I really struggle. I feel like there's like you have the the demon and the angel on your shoulder sometimes when it comes to that specific thing. Yes. But honestly, that's, I feel like, to cut you some slack or you should cut yourself some slack. Yeah. Because... They're really not that you can't go wrong because you can like you can overdo it, which is exactly what you're saying not to do. But like you can be fulfilled in either of those. So it's it's not like the other thing is like a dangerous thing. It's not yeah. like I don't know. It's like an, always like an unhealthy thing right. to overbook yourself. It's more just like mental energy. Yeah. And the- emotional energy. But yeah, that's a good point. I love having days where I have nothing to do that night. Mm-hmm. And the weeks where I do have something on my calendar like every single night of the week, I'm like, oh, I can't wait until five days in a row where I can just sit at night yeah (laughs) do nothing I know and it's hard when it's like I just genuinely love my friends like Mm -hmm. the people that I see all the time are not people that drain me at all right but I think it's just natural as a human that like giving people your energy even if they're people you love and love spending time with like it is draining in and of itself yeah and you have to realize that and just like sometimes take a breath yeah you know what I worry about though sometimes with myself like if I have kids one day people talk about this how it's like I mean when do you take a breath you never do until they're 18 I was thinking about this <laughs> literally yesterday like, yikes. because I was thinking about how when I was little my parents were more strict with sleepovers even with like our cousins and I I think it was because when we would sleep out we would not get any sleep and yeah. then we would be cranky and in a bad mood the entire next day so like they didn't want us to be in a bad mood the entire Saturday and it always annoyed me at the time obviously as a child but now I'm thinking and I'm like wait no that is so real because when you're a parent to a child that's Mm. between zero and like maybe 15 or 16 maybe a little bit younger than that you're literally entertaining them morning to night and you are organizing their entire life every decision they make from waking up to going to bed and even when they're sleeping you are organizing that that is exhausting how do parents do it (laughs) how and also i hate to say it but it's true going to like a music class with a child Mm. that sounds like my worst nightmare soccer games on a saturday morning no we're going to brunch how do i make brunch my child's like number one activity because i will No, I think we should. I I will find a way to make them sit at brunch with me and my friends. (laughs) I think we have to. I think it's the only way. Sorry. 
Or no, actually, maybe this is where the sports come into play. You dad takes them to the sports. You get brunch to yourself. Yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking this is too detailed for where I'm at in my life. But I'm just I'm just saying like it worries me. Oh, my God. No, I was thinking about that. And I'm like, that cannot be anytime soon. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. That's true. Maybe you just get to a point where you're you're like really hype on kids and you just like you're in the acceptance stage of like, this is just my life now. And this is actually what I want. Yeah. Like maybe people want to go to the soccer game or whatever the hell. (laughs) I don't I mean, you know, I do. Whatever the hell. (laughs) I do say that now, though. Maybe it's just because I'm not that close with any children. Mm. Because then I do think about my cousin's kids. And if my cousin were to text me and be like, hey, so-and-so has like a softball game. Do you want to come and watch it? I would be like, oh, my God, yes. I love her so much. She's so cute. Me too. I love her. So (laughs) maybe I would. Maybe, yeah. Maybe with the right kid. Yeah. (laughs) Right. My kid. My kid. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hit unsubscribe on email list. Oh, yeah. I had so many emails that every single day they would come into my app on my Mac. I don't even know how like other computers are are formatted, but on a MacBook, it's like you have all your emails connected to one app and they're all feeding into that. I would go through with like all these stores or like random shit I signed up for and just like delete, 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 delete when literally there's an option for click to unsubscribe. So I can either hit delete, delete, delete 17 times a day for the rest of my life or I can do one click and click unsubscribe and then I'm done. (laughs) So now I've actually been doing this for like a few years, but I unsubscribe to emails like it's my job. Mm -hmm. Like if I sign up for a contest, if I don't win, as soon as that sweepstakes is passed, the date is passed, unsubscribe. Sorry. Yeah. Unless it's something I care about. There are some brands that I actually like their emails. I was going to say, unless it's the brands that I work for, baby. Yeah. No, I... <laughs> Just kidding. It's honestly random things I don't care about. There are some brands that have really good emails. Billabong Women's, like, oh, I don't even think I'm subscribed to them anymore, actually. Come to, come to think of, because I haven't seen one in a hot minute. Interesting. But their emails were, like, the most inspiring. Like, the content, the photos... They were so beautiful. Maybe I'll resubscribe. I like Sweet Greens marketing. Oh. It's a random one, but their marketing always gets me. Like the subject lines. Yeah. I, I do write subject lines, so like I pay attention more than probably the average person does. Um also Reformation, really good. They're yeah. They should have classes on Reformation's email marketing strategy. They probably do. I'm getting niche, but yeah, yeah. whatever. Um No, I agree with you. Sometimes they are inspiring and sometimes they keep them, but I'm talking about the ones that I like if you just delete it as soon as it comes in, just unsubscribe. Yeah. It'll save you a few clicks. Right. In the long run. Okay, well doing something you've been putting off. Oh, that's a good idea. Which like I haven't been doing this <laughs> myself, i.e. finances. Or just like other random things. But anytime I do one of these things, like I had this finance related task that I was putting off all last summer. And when I finally did it in the fall, first of all, it took like less than a day to figure out. That's the worst. And well, I, it's the best. It's Yeah, it's the worst and the best because it's the worst because you're like, OK, I could have done this three months ago. And but then it's over and you're just like, you just feel so good. So mm-hmm. just like trying to do that more. But I need to like tell myself this, too. Yeah, no, me too. It took me so long to get together all of my organized, like, expenses, miles, income, like, all of that stuff and send it to my CPA from last year. Yeah. And actually, it didn't take me that long. I put it off so long and then it took me an hour, maybe a little bit more, to organize everything and get it sent over. Exactly. Unfollow accounts that don't fuel you. Ground. Wait, I have I have the same thing, but muting people. Oh yeah. Or yeah. I've been muting Instagram stories like it's my job. Oh same. I, it's my favorite thing to do. Yeah. Um. Or blocking people from seeing your stories. Oh, I need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't. Nobody actually watches. I have like a hundred viewers on my story most of the time. No. <laughs> people that would maybe not give you inner peace. Right. Overall, like any social media that would not give you peace. Yeah. Deeply think about this. Is there anyone that watches your Instagram story that maybe isn't an active part of your life? Maybe they're your ex. Maybe they're your ex crush. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know who they are. An enemy. An enemy. A frenemy. Is there anyone that every time you post an Instagram story, you are looking through to see if they watched it? And once they watched it, you don't even look anymore. Maybe that's the person you need to take away from your Instagram story viewers. Wait, that's a good, ana- that's a good activity to do. 
yeah like a good reflective activity i have definitely done that especially with like exes or yeah. crushes or anything like that you know what i find really odd this is just kind of a side tangent like guys that you maybe went on a couple like a few dates with and it never got that deep and they you guys like follow each other on instagram and they still watch all of your stuff and it's like not only did this not get that deep but first of all why did i even let you follow me on instagram right so that's on me i guess <laughs> i'm a lot more careful i've been a lot more careful the past few months of like okay we don't need to be following everyone we meet on instagram right because it's like yeah they just like watch my story and i'm it's like i don't watch yours i either <laughs> unfollowed you or muted you mm-hmm. a lot of these people i unfollowed and it's just like what are you doing like <laughs> I think it's like mindless like they don't even I think. guess but I find it very odd like yeah Instagram behavior it is it's like I don't care about your life and you sh- certainly should not care about mine and like <laughs> I liked and maybe it is mindless I'm like giving myself too much like power like it's not like they're like what's Rebecca doing but like okay I'm just gonna say because I'm there's this one guy that I I think I went on like two dates with I'm not kidding he's always like one of the first people to watch my story he has post notifications turned on <laughs> wow and I'm like what are we doing here it's it's a little weird it's getting weird there's a fake account that watches my story within like the first few seconds and it's it's to the point where I they have to have the notifications on because how would you be there? Like it's just too coincidental. Do you think it's like um like I an enemy know. of yours or something? I have no idea. Are you public? Yeah. Mm, okay. I think. I think so. I have no idea who it could be. I mean, you know what? Maybe it's not even a fake account. Maybe it is a genuine person who just happens to have two followers and yeah. no profile photo. <laughs> but maybe. I don't maybe know. it's a bot. I don't know what's a bot. I don't know what bot would have this this agenda. <laughs> you know, I would probably have to pay the bot. Yeah. People <laughs> this pay I'm for that. For free. <laughs> I have no clue who People it is. People do pay for that. I almost like I'm tempted to just say the name and be like, if you're listening right now, <laughs> I w- I'm dying to know who you are. <laughs> yeah, it's very odd. I try yeah. to like mute. I. I- I have a lot of people muted. Yeah. Trisha told me to do that. I have been muting people so much. It just gives you so much peace. It's like it really does become out of sight, out of mind. Like I don't need to know about your life. Yeah. And I feel like when I block people from my stories, it's because I don't need you knowing about my life. Yeah. Like that. It's also not even like when it comes to the muting, the blocking is a bit different because like I don't care what random people I know spend their time on. It's not random for me. Well, (laughs) <laughs> some people though like some are random people that i i muted their story because it's like if it, it, it'll be like my friend's friend yeah no i that, don't care yeah. what, if she watches my story okay but i don't need to spend my time watching hers not because i don't love her or respect her but because i'm addicted to social media like mm-hmm. many of us are and anything that i can do to make it less entertaining less interesting like less stuff to see i need to do that therefore i need to mute almost everyone i follow or okay. i'm going to sit there and mindlessly scroll yeah. and I can't do that so that's the reason I've been muting people it's not because I don't care about them like my friend's sister I love her but I really just I have a problem it's about me and so I muted her yeah like, that's an, that's my example of that no yeah I I agree with that anything to make it for me it's like anything to make it a little more peaceful a right. little bit more of like a safe space yeah whether it's me posting or whether it's like me watching other people's like what we were talking about the home like it should be more intentional I don't want to be tap tap tapping and then being like why am I seeing this random person's vacation that's exactly what I mean when the last time I interacted with you was 2015 yeah and And it's like with peace and love I'm muting you with peace and love yes I think um yes take your power back yes exactly my last tip on my whole entire list is turn every account you have to paperless like we do not need to be getting mail i do not need all of my utility bills in the mail i need them in my inbox on auto pay so i can track that my gas bill was that much money last month it's all i need to know yeah i don't need to take the envelope out of my mailbox open it look at it put it in the recycle bin then have to deal with recycling the paper later like no (laughs) everything on paperless that's a good life tip yeah yeah love it i don't really have any more 
<gasps> Slay. To we be did honest. it. Yeah. We just did the damn thing. We just solved all your problems. Mm-hmm. We made your lives easier. We made our lives easier. Yeah. Now we have to go do these things. I was going to say, now it's up to us. Now it's up to you. Yeah. Now's the time for personal accountability. Get we after it, it, girl bosses. <laughs> Gatekeep, gatekeep, girl. Wait, wait. gaslight. Oh. Gatekeep, gaslight, girl boss. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Snaps. Okay, should we just end it there? I feel like I have nothing else to say. Which is funny because we always do. Should I we know. talk about the Cheesecake Factory for the next half an hour? <laughs> <laughs> yes. S'mores Cheesecake is my favorite kind. When will they sponsor us? Because we talk about or Applebee's or Blank Diner. I'm, I'm literally going to reach out to the marketing team of Cheesecake Factory after this. We just had an excellent meal there a couple months ago. And like we meal. need. We had two pieces of cheesecake. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> we split them. I forgot we didn't get savory items. We didn't. But two pieces of cheesecake there. It is a meal. It's actually probably it, like three meals. It's like five meals in yeah. one day pretty <laughs> yeah. much. Um, Yeah. Okay. Well, catch us there. Meet and greet. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Oh my god, let's do a public meetup where all those like OG YouTubers used to do it back when the world was a better place. And they could just be like, I'm going to this park at two o'clock, meet me there. And then that was safe. Can we talk about how unhinged like 2013 YouTube culture was? I, it's like crazy. TanaCon? Oh my god, was that 2013? That might have been a little later, but I, we're actually, yeah. Tana Mojo will be on this podcast next week. So. Make sure to tune in. I am actually manifesting it. Like, I'm picturing her in this room right now. Oh, my God. I feel like she would love this room. Yeah. (laughs) She would love us, too. Yeah, she would love this podcast. She would love everything. Tana, if you're listening, come on the podcast. Tell a crazy story. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Okay. Share it with your friends. Thank you, guys. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.